Having designated feedings where you feed a consistent time, you know, two or three times a day, I think is really important and that can help. I mean, the biggest mistake people make is they, they feed into it and they literally feed into it. And so the cat whine and whine and whines and then they get the food and you're reinforcing a behavior and you're teaching them that when they cry and they cry long enough, they will eventually get the food. And so it's really important to just be strict and strong and hold your ground and you're gonna hear about it. For, for a while, a few days, maybe even weeks. You just have to really stand your ground when it comes to that. So I had the same issue. My little dog, Henry, was one of those dogs and was a total spaz when I tried to clip his nails. And so what I would do is give him a little treat after every nail. And so I'd have a little plate with a bunch of little dabs of just really tiny amounts of peanut butter, a little piece of turkey or something like that. And then every single nail, you give him a treat and teach him, hey dude, if you can be good about this and let me trim your nail, you're gonna get rewarded for it. And after a couple times of doing that, it's become a much easier process. With any kind of training, it's gradual steps and positive reinforcement are, are kind of the basis foundation of it. And so, you know, you'd start off with just maybe putting a collar on and, you know, awarding them with treats and then putting the leash on, letting them walk around with it, just getting used to it. And then rewarding the positive behaviors that you want to see them do with the treats so they can create that association. Cats can be a little more challenging. They're not always food motivated. And so uh, I do find it to be easier with other species like dogs or even crocodiles can be trained very easily with some food motivation. Some cats, I mean, they're at a point where they're just not going to do it. Some cats never want to do it. You, you have to just be kind of accepting of that. But if you do it right and, and you go stepwise and uh, do the positive reinforcement, many animals do respond quite well to it. And I think it's important to know that our pets are very similar to us. And so even simple things like changes in their environment can cause stress. So that could be moving or a new pet, or a newborn baby, or you know, construction going on at home, or you know, like home improvement projects, that kind of thing, where they're you know, marking or peeing outside of the box, hiding more excessively, decreased appetite, less social engagement or interactions. I mean, all of those are, are pretty common signs of stress. And now it's important to note, these also could be signs that there's an underlying health issue going on. So as a vet, I have to tell you, you know, consult with your local vet, Maybe bring your pet in and make sure there's not some other issue going on before we assume it's some kind of behavioral thing.